Coaching Cafe. My name is Belinda Dubston and welcome to our weekly I Ching overview for the week commencing the 14th of August 2023. Before we get stuck into this week and the changing lines and all the dynamic, intense energy that the I Ching is bringing us for this week, let's just recap and cast our minds back to last week. We had hexagram 61, centered truth, inner truth, guiding us to seeing things as they really are, having a moment, a eureka that I spoke about of that hot knife through butter of just having a realization and seeing things in a new way, seeing truth for what it is, seeing a situation in new light because we are seeing it clearly. We are connecting the inside of ourselves to the outside. Things line up. Shoo, and there we go. We have that insight. We have the opportunity to connect and be in flow because we're connected to who we really are and the wonderful energy that can release when we are truly connected, when we're truly centered in the heart, in an open heart that's open and welcoming to truth, to flow, and to things as they are. Two very interesting changing lines really encouraging us to stay focused on our own game not get caught up in the horses running next to us, if you remember from that changing line. And of course, our outcome hexagram or our second flow for last week, which was all about hexagram six conflict. Where was your attention drawn to areas of conflict? And what did that mean for you? Did you approach conflict in a new way because you saw it as conflict as opposed to just barreling in the bison, right? <laughs> Bashing heads and seeking to win the argument at all costs. So where might you have averted an argument or an issue or created a de-escalation in that conflict because you saw conflict for what it is and found new ways of working with others? Please, if something came up for you last week on this, please do share a comment. We love participating and sharing as a community with those. Right, this week, as we work with the flow of change, what are we being asked to pay attention to as a collective, as a community, more than anything else this week? That's what our question is every week. And our first hexagram for this week is 45, amassing or gathering together. Oh, this is such a wonderful hexagram. And there's lots of layers to it, as they all do. This hexagram is all about amassing the harvest, all the stalks of the wheat that have been Cut and in the field, pulling them together and binding them together in bundles, okay? A lovely idea of culmination of bringing in from the harvest, the structure of bringing in and binding things together in these kind of bundles that can then be taken to market. And with this hexagram, it's a very strong energy of binding and uniting with a large group of people, with a network, with a community, binding together to achieve something, working together and being focused and activating that focus as a group, as a collective, because there is a shared interest, there's a shared vision, there's something that's really powerful, that's binding everyone together. Remember all those stalks of wheat, binding them all together to create something magical and wonderful. When this hexagram comes up for me, I often think about the internet, right? Networks, big accessibility of people, accessing a wide range of people. From a business point of view, that's like doing an ad campaign, right? Or a media campaign, or broadcasting information, or networking, or using technology to reach a much bigger audience. It's not necessarily that that's going to be what plays out for you this week, but it's that idea of tapping into a crowd. You've heard me talk about this hexagram of this idea of being at a concert, right? Where you've got you know, the main band that's on the stage and everyone's, wow, and everyone's there and united because they just love the music and they love this band and they all want to be together and they want to be and share in this concert experience with this band, interacting with the music. And that's a very compelling idea with this hexagram. Imagine even if your crowd is a crowd of two, three, four, five, it's understanding this idea of a larger group of people being bound together and passionately hooked together to achieve something. So this week, where is our attention being drawn? It's being drawn to leveraging the value in the crowd, okay? In the cloud or the crowd is what 
you've heard me talk about before with the sexogram. Leveraging the group, gathering together what's meaningful and bringing it together. It's a very positive, harvest-like, abundance hexagram. It does require care because you can imagine a concert crowd, okay, can very quickly go very nasty as a crowd gets just overworked, right, and there's not enough space and there's pushing and there's shoving. So things can go awry very quickly. We have to keep everybody focused on the central goal, the central reason that everyone is together and celebrating this moment. So a very strong purpose, right? A very strong community, a sense of what binds all those pieces of wheat together, the thing that binds us together. And really it's just to lean into it, open ourselves up to it, go into it, expand into it. It's a wonderful expansion energy that's asking us to lean into the crowd, into the crowd, into the big network, into the leads, into the internet, into marketing, into your network, is lean into it and embrace and connect with those around you. So this week we have two changing lines in the second and the third position. So let's work through in this energy of gathering together and amassing, coalescing, right, of bringing the harvest in, what are some of the specific things that the I Ching is drawing our attention to this week? Okay, in position two, focusing on expanding and extending the group. So part of this gathering together energy will be to look for ways that we can take the group we're a part of and opening it up, expanding and extending its value, welcoming in, creating inclusivity, broadening the mandate, is opening up and extending what the group can do. So when we work with this, depending on whether it's going to trigger for you in your personal life, your business life, or whatever it is, your teams, think about how can I be expansive and inclusive in this cluster that I'm part of, right? Because a cluster can be so many different things. It can be a community group too. It can be a community project or you know, a, an interest or a hobby that you're part of. So as we work with this changing line, it's asking us to see that our opportunity this week, how we activate value, how we create focus and growth this week, is we expand the group. We open it up. We create that opportunity to include more and to expand what this group, what this cluster can do. So as we work with this week, contemplate, think about where might this group, this cluster that's critical to your life right now. Be a little bit locked off, a little bit niche, a little bit fractious, right? All we're saying with this changing line isn't that there is a faction, right? What it's saying is you activate value by opening up and extending the work of the group, okay? It's almost like leaning into the energy of this whole hexagram is sitting summarized in line two. In line three, a very interesting line, it talks about a group that's already coalesced, right, one over there, and we're now on the outside of that group and we're trying to get in. We're trying to get a foothold or we're trying to be part of this crowd, okay? And somehow, either the crowd has formed earlier and they're kind of tight, right? Or we're kind of a little bit late to the party, right? We're a, a late arrival to what has already been established and formulated. So what we need to do here is not keep on pushing to force ourselves into the group. That energy of force is not, you know, well supported by this line in this week. The way we get into this group, because the group is important to what we're trying to do, is we find somebody who is at the center of the group and we connect with that person and through that person, they draw us into the group. So if there's something you're wanting to achieve and you feel like an outsider, right? Perhaps there's something that you want to join or a community you want to join or a business network that you want to be part of, but you just are struggling to get a yes or struggling to get in, okay, or struggling to get into that client network, is connect with the person in the group who resonates with you, okay, who understands what you're trying to do and the value you're here to contribute, and let that person bring you in, okay. Part of this changing line is accepting that we couldn't do it on our own, okay, kind of the, the shame of I couldn't get into this group on my own merits, on my own two feet. I needed somebody else to vouch for me or to get me that in. And it's almost like we have to get over the ego of that and just accept that it's okay. 
Somebody else helped us. The point is that we got in and we got connected into this group of people. That's what's important. Let's put down the concern and the stress around how that process happened. Be in principle and find that person who resonates with you and let them guide you in, ask for their help to get you connected and introduced to this group. So it'll be interesting to see for you as you work with this week, what does this mean for you? What group does this connect to? What is this person or this entity that is going to help you, can help you if you ask for that help? Mm, very interesting. So our second hexagram, the process of change and growth we are going through this week as a collective. What are we being asked to pay attention to in the sea of all the things that are flying around us at this time? And that is hexagram 28, Great Pressure. This is the diamond formed, the compression of the coal and the intense pressure and heat. Okay, so this is a hexagram that comes to bring our awareness to the pressure and the stress we go through when we're going through a crisis, when we're going through an intense growth period where there's an intense creative energy pumping through our lives, our businesses, our teams, and we experience stress. Okay, so stress is a word that comes up very strongly with this hexagram. And this hexagram brings us insight and awareness on how to deal with this stress. All the hexagrams bring us a situation, bring us an energy of flow, and give us some tools, some way of thinking about the situation to develop up and into and through the situation itself. So with amassing, with gathering together 45, our strategy is about really leaning into the network and what the network can do to accelerate us. Here with this hexagram, 28 great pressure, we are being cautioned that there's stress, okay? And the image of the hexagram, you can see all the male four lines in the middle, the top female line, bottom and, and top, okay? And this heavy energy, right? is bearing down the image of a ridge pole or a support beam in a house getting lots of pressure from the top and like you can hear the timber starting to crack. Okay. What we do here, we accept number one, that stress is a byproduct of leaning into new things, of new creative flow. In order for us to go from an old state to a new state, there's pressure, okay, there's stress. We have to just accept that the creative process we're activating, the new things we're wanting to experience and do, create pressure. Fine, accept that. The second part is we can take proactive action to not collapse under the weight of this beam sagging. Okay, how do we do that? First of all, we put down all the things that are unnecessary. When there's a huge focused process of pushing through something big, something new, something creative, something of flow and energy, it is not the time to go down all kinds of side roads that are not critical and important for them. What we do is we harness all our attention, all our focus on the critical things that are in front of us right now, okay? Put down the unnecessary. In our lives, you often have this view, because we don't stop to think about it, that everything's important. And unless we put down on paper and we say, you know what, I think this is really important, but is this really important? No, no, it's not. This is really important. So this week, our question that's gonna help us work through this hexagram is, what is the most important thing that I do achieve and complete or work through this week? And then make your choices around the answer to that question. Don't get sidetracked in all kinds of things that splay your energy out into all kinds of directions, which means the pressure just bears down and bears down and can create a collapse. The other part of this idea of great pressure is how do we reinforce the walls? Okay, because the pressure is coming down. If we can't change the pressure and it's positive and it's part of the process, that's all fine. How do we reinforce our structure? So what I always do when I come across this hexagram is I say, right, where are there wobbly structures? Where are there things where a little bit of pressure just shakes everything up, okay? Reinforce the things that are weak, all right, that are holding up this roof. Put your energy into reinforcing those, into stabilizing your structure, whether that is creating some routine in the week, getting enough sleep, having a good decent meal every night, whatever it is, what is your process to bring stability 
in the midst of this energy that's pumping, okay? And that's what we can take responsibility for. Very interesting with gathering together, amassing, and great pressure together. You can just imagine that the week is going to pump, okay? And our task is to be ready, is to work with it, and to maximize the opportunity that comes out of it as we focus our attention in a new way into these hexagrams, into these changing lines, and we see and work with our flow differently. Powerful stuff for us to work with this week. Remember, our hexagram for the whole of August is locked. Okay, it's hexagram 24, the return, the turning back to good times after the darkness. So if you've not yet watched the monthly overview, go and check that out. And please like and share. Every interaction with the channel helps me. It helps the channel to grow and to reach more people. That's how YouTube works. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me on the podcast version as well. And if you are new to the channel or the podcast, please click subscribe, hit that bell, hit the follow button. And I look forward to getting the next weekly episode into your app as soon as it is ready. Thank you so much. And I will see you soon. Thank you.